What you're looking at is one of the most innovative controllers for residential geothermal heat pump systems. It's called the ORB and it comes standard on all Modine residential units. Today we are going to show you how, to, how simple the startup process is with the ORB. So when you power up the ORB, you first come to the calibrate screen. And to calibrate it, you firmly hold one finger over that little circle until the circle moves. And you follow the circle around the screen. And after three touches, the screen is calibrated. Uh, here is where you can toggle between what type of unit you have. So a forced air, a water to water non-reversing, water to water reversing, and combined. In this video we'll be showing you how to configure a forced air unit. Here is where you select the size of the unit. If you're unsure, it can be found in digits 4, 5, and 6 in the model number on the serial plate. So we'll do a 3 ton today. The next three screens allow for control of the fan for plus minus 5% of the airflow. So fan G is the setting the fan will run at in a call for fan only. So when there's a G call, maybe you want more airflow, plus 5%. Fan low is uh, the fan speed the fan will run at when the compressor is in low stage. So maybe we'll select minus 5%. And fan high is the speed the fan will run at when the compressor is in full stage. We'll go plus 5% for that one. So uh, dehumidity control. If you have a thermostat with humidity control, you want to set this number closest to your most common relative humidity set point. So the allure, the orb allows you to toggle 60, 70, 80, and 90, and increasing this number slows the fan down more when there's a, uh, D, a dehum call to strip more moisture out of the air. So in this example, we'll select 60. The orb also allows you to toggle between Fahrenheit and Celsius. We'll choose Fahrenheit. Here's where you tell the orb what's in your geo field. So if you have uh, an open loop system with well water, you would select water and the orb would automatically calculate your freeze protect at 36 degrees or 4 degrees above freezing. Let's say you have a closed loop system. Maybe you're running glycol. All you have to do is enter the percentage of the solution that was put into the geo field and the orb automatically calculates your freeze protect. Uh, right there, it calculated 21. So with the orb, there's no manual calculations or resistor snipping, which is always a good thing. So here is where you configure your flow center pumps. Uh, if you have one unit controlling one geo field, you would just select master. But if you have two units with one geo field, one needs to be set up as the master and one as the slave. Uh, the reason would be if you have one geo field, you're most likely only running one pump pack 
and you can only wire one or you can only wire the pump pack up to one unit. So for example, maybe you have a forced air system in the house and a small water to water system for radiant heat in the garage. You could wire up your pump pack to the forced air unit and select master and then on the water to water unit you would select slave and that allows uh, the water to water unit to communicate with that forced air unit to turn the pumps on. In this video we're doing a forced air unit though so we will select master. This is where you configure your desuperheater. So it should be noted that you do not want to turn this on unless the desuperheater is filled with water and plumbed to the tank. Uh, that's a quick way to burn out your desuperheater pump really quickly. So if it is filled with water and plumbed, we'll go ahead and turn that on. And here's where you enter your set point. In order to assure that your desuperheater runs as often as possible to help save you money, you want to choose a set point at or up to 10 degrees above the upper element temperature of the water tank. So basically you want it at or higher than what your water heater set point is and that, that will help your desuperheater run as often as possible. So uh, you can select anywhere between 110 and 140 degrees with the orb. For this example, we'll select 130. Uh, this next screen, you select if your compressor is a single or dual speed. If you're unsure, look at digit 8 in the model number on the serial plate and if it's a 1 or a 3 it's a single speed and if it's a 2 or a 4 it's a dual speed so most forced air uh, come with a dual compressor so we'll select dual another innovative feature of the orb is real-time EER monitoring in order to do this, however, the voltage needs to be inputted. So typically, uh, once it's started up, the contractor would take uh, a voltage reading at the incoming terminals uh, with a multimeter, and this is where you would enter the voltage. Let's say 240. So once, once the orb knows that 240 volts is coming into it, uh, it monitors the amps and calculates real-time EER based on those conditions. The orb also comes standard with control of up to four zones. So let's turn zoning on. Go to four. And the orb also allows you to select the percentage of airflow to each zone. So it defaults to 25% for all four. Maybe your main level is 30%. Maybe zone two is the upstairs. 30%. Maybe zone 3 is the basement at 20. And zone 4 the den at 20 again. And at this point you've configured all the screens to the orb. Uh, you just firmly hold this button. And now your unit is configured and ready to start up. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, contact your Modine sales rep.